Hey, how are you folks? Jason Horowitz. Glad to be with you on this week's installment of the Big Vent presented by Coors Light. Every week we've been venting on the hottest topics happening in the world of sports. This week, no different. Don't forget to be sure and tune in and vent back at cbssports.com slash Big Vent. Today we're talking hockey. After all, the Stanley Cup Finals do begin this Saturday. And here to preview the matchup, former NHL player, current New York Rangers broadcaster, and a guy who will be calling the Stanley Cup Finals for all kinds of international networks, Joe Micheletti joining us. Joe, how you doing? Doing well, Jason. Uh, great to be with you. I appreciate you, you being with us. Let's get right into this. And before we actually break down the specific matchup of the Red Wings and the Penguins, is this what the NHL needed to have a franchise out of the Western Conference that everybody knows in Detroit and a player that everybody knows in Sidney Crosby? Well, Jason, I don't know if – I don't think that the NHL needed, needed this because then if it didn't happen, you would think, well – you know, the NHL, it's too bad that these other teams didn't get in. So I don't think they needed it. I think certainly it is, uh, it's tremendous for the sport and for the game that we all love to have Detroit back in the finals. And, of course, they had such a wonderful regular season. And then with Pittsburgh and, and the Young Guns and Sidney Crosby and Gunny Malkin and, and these, all these young players that uh, a lot of people wondered, you know, how, how good can they be and, and how far can they go? So uh, to, have these two, uh, to have these two teams in the finals, I, I think, just makes for a, a great hockey final more than anything and, and a, a chance to see two of the most talented offensive teams in the game uh, today. And yet these two teams were two of the best defensive teams in, in hockey in, in the playoffs, and that's why they're there. Especially Pittsburgh, 12-2 uh, and two so far in the postseason getting to the Stanley Cup Finals. Let's talk about the Penguins a little bit. You talk about the talent that both these teams have. Let's focus on Pittsburgh first. Everybody knows Sidney Crosby because he's been pushed since he's joined the league, but it's not just him. It's Evgeny Malkin who had an unbelievable season. Uh, Marion Hossa came over from the trade deadline. Now, all those guys not on the same line, but uh, they have had an amazing postseason. Well, I think they, they grew up a lot, and I think when it really started, was when Sidney Crosby actually got hurt and had that high ankle sprain and missed 28 games of the regular season. And everyone started to wonder, how is Pittsburgh going to do now that Crosby is out of the lineup? Well, what ended up happening is that they ended up getting Evgeny Malkin to not only increase his level of play, but get it to a point where he is one of the finalists for the most valuable player in the National Hockey League. That's how good that he's become. And it got that way because of the injury, I think, to, uh, to Sidney Crosby. So you've got two world-class center icemen playing on the same team. <clears throat> and, you know, the, and the fact that, uh, that Pittsburgh was able to do that was because they were just bad for a number of years. And it allowed them to get these top draft picks. Once you get there, then you have to make the right picks, and they certainly did that. So you've got a, you've got a team in Pittsburgh that's got not only those two centers, but – Jordan Stahl is often uh, forgotten about because of the, the centers that play ahead of him, but he is also a tremendous young player. And then I think you, you look at the trade deadline, and what Ray Shiro, the general manager, did at the trade deadline was, was marvelous. He got the hottest guy out that was on the market, and, uh, uh, and he was able to you know, make that deal with, with Atlanta to get Marion Hosa there, and he has proven that it was a great trade. He's fit right in. He's given Sidney Crosby a wing on that side that can do a lot of different things. And then he, he made some trade to shore up his, uh, his defense as well. And add to that the fact that their young goaltender had a tremendous growing season this year. And, and now you've got the makings of a team that has belief in themselves, has some of the great young players in the game, and they're very young. And I don't think they feel the pressure as much as maybe some of the older players on other teams. And then that goaltender, Marc-Andre Fleury, one of those top draft picks that you had mentioned beforehand, but uh, he's going up against, and his team is going up against a guy in Chris Osgood who uh, came in in the first round for the Red Wings against Nashville after Dominic Koshik had started. He's been fantastic, 10-2, uh, 1.65 goals against average, and he is also a Stanley Cup winner. He has won a cup for the Red Wings in the past. Does that give the Wings the advantage between the pipes? I'm not sure, uh, to tell you the truth. I think it's always important that you win, but uh, it, what has really, which has really stood out for me is that I think most of the question marks regarding Marc-Andre Fleury have been answered. 
and he was very, very impressive in the series. The, the, the game that really changed my thinking about him, not that I didn't think he was a very good goaltender and talented, but there's always that, that wonder uh, for a 23-year-old goaltender that hasn't gotten to that level before. And in round number two against the New York Rangers, when Pittsburgh had won the first two games in Pittsburgh, going back to Madison Square Garden in that atmosphere, knowing that the Rangers had to win game number three to have a chance to win the series. Marc-Andre Fleury was terrific in the first period, stopping, I believe, 14 of 15 shots. And so right then and there, I looked at it and I said, this kid has grown up. Has grown up. He's gotten to the next level. So certainly the experience uh, helps Chris Osgood because he's been there for so long and he's redefined his game, I think, this year. But uh, I just think that right now there's so much confidence with Pittsburgh that I think the experience factor is almost a wash. But break that down then, confidence, talent-wise, all of that with Pittsburgh. You've got, your, you've got your talent, your youth, your exuberance, but it's a good mix because they also have some veteran players there uh, as well. Compare that to what the Red Wings have and break down Detroit. Well, when, when you start with Detroit, I think you start with, with Nick Lindstrom uh, on defense. I mean, he still and probably will win the Norris Trophy again this year as the league's best defenseman. And then what's happened is that they've gotten some marvelous contributions from, from other people, and some of those the people have been no names. So Franzen, who, is, who leads, the, leads the playoffs in goals and has been hurt uh, uh, because of the concussion problems, uh, you would expect him to play in the finals. And then you, you, know, you look at a player like uh, uh, Nicholas Cronwall on defense who has really stepped up his game, and some people think he's been better than Nick Lidstrom in the playoffs. Rafalski, who signed as a free agent after spending all those years in New Jersey, also on defense, is a tremendous player. We talked about Osgood and his his experience. So I think when you when you look at Detroit, you see you see more players with the experience. And as I mentioned earlier, Jason, this is a team that's just tremendous athletically. They love to handle the puck and to make plays. But as they've proven throughout the throughout the playoffs, when it comes time to play a good defensive uh, hockey, they can do it with, with just about everyone, and that's why this I, I think that's why this series sets up as maybe the, the two best teams made it to the finals and these two teams can do a little bit of everything as we've seen them throughout the playoffs, both offensively, defensively, and with their goaltending. And I think you hit on a key point as well you said the Red Wings love to handle the puck and maybe the best way to, to stop the Penguins offensive attack, which has been fantastic is to keep the puck away from them. So that obviously will play a big role as well. All right, Joe, it's the end of the segment here. It's the end of the Big Ben. It's time for your Big Ben. Give us 45 seconds, and at the end, why not throw in a little prediction as well? Well, my Big Ben is this, is that a lot of people, most hockey people, didn't think that Pittsburgh would, would make it to where they are now and be considered a top, a top team in the playoffs and, and now a chance to win the Stanley Cup. And they... I think a lot of people were, were critical for a number of reasons. I'll start with their coach. Many, many people in the hockey world were, were critical of, uh, of Michel Therrien. Uh, didn't think that he had what it took to not only coach a young team and bring them to the type of level that they are now, but to be able to instill a, a belief and a system defensively that was able to shut down teams in the playoffs. And if, if not... You know, if, if not for the coaching of Tarion, this team wouldn't be where they are. I mean, we talk about Crosby, and we talk about Malkin, and we talk about their goaltending. But you know what? The one person that does not get enough credit is their coach, Michelle Tarion. And for all those people that didn't think that he could get this done and instill not only a confidence but a system where they could not only shut teams down but go on the offense when they needed to and beat teams by scoring goals, well, shame on them because Michelle Tarion is proving – that he is one of the top coaches in the game, and that is my rant. <laughs> and he's getting his due here on CBSSports.com, going up against Mike Babcock, the head coach of the Detroit Red Wings. Joe McLeay, thank you so much. Enjoy calling all the games on the international broadcasts. Okay, Jason, always a pleasure to be with you. I hope we can do it again sometime. Talk to you soon. Folks, that's all for our show today. Now it's your turn to talk hockey on our message board. Click or visit www.cbsSports.com slash bigvent to vent your thoughts with us. For Joe Micheletti, I'm Jason Horowitz. We want to thank him for joining us. We'll see you next time on The Big Vent. Take care, folks.